Hey class, and welcome to the Subtracting Decimals and Money tutorial. Why do you need to know this? Well, when we figure out how much change we should get back, or how much more money we need, we subtract the amounts to give us the answer. So I'm going to use the strategies that look very similar to the addition strategies. Number one, we're going to write the greater number at the top. We have to do it this time. Before I suggested it this time, we have to. Strategy two, we're going to line up our decimals still. Strategy three, again, I won't have enough time, but we're going to check by adding, and we'll talk about checking in another tutorial. So let's just start off pretty basic. Let's start off with the idea that I want to subtract, subtract 8 cents from 23. So 23 cents subtract 8. So let's write this in, a, first of all. Uh, zero dollars, right? Decimal. 23 cents. So two dimes, three pennies. 23 cents. Subtract. Eight cents. So no dollars. Not even a dime. Eight cents. And subtract. I'm going to just show this idea here. Let's say we have 23 cents. So I'm going to model that. 23 cents. Two dimes and three pennies. One, two, three. And we're going to subtract eight cents from that. The problem is, I only have three pennies right now to give. I have to subtract eight pennies, but I only have three. So what we're going to do is we're going to borrow 10 pennies. So we're going to trade in this dime, and we're going to borrow the amount, so which is 10 pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one dime was traded in and borrowed into 10 pennies. Now that I look here, I can actually subtract. I can subtract 8 pennies from this. So I can subtract 1, 2, 3. I have to subtract 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And so how much money do I actually have left? Well, I have 1 dime and 5 pennies. I have 1 dime and 5 pennies. I can see that here. Let me just show you how we would do that without using uh, pictures to show it. So I have three pennies, but I have to subtract eight. I have to give away eight. I can't do that. I only have three. So we borrowed one dime like we just did before, and that gave 10 more pennies here. So now we have 13 pennies, and we give away eight, and we have five left over. I have one dime left over, subtract zero, still with one dime. So 23 cents subtract eight cents equals 15 cents. So I'm going to model. Let's model. Uh, I'm going to model a, a word problem for you, just to have it use the strategies in action. So Emily wanted to buy a huge chocolate bar that costs four dollars and forty nine cents. That would be a massive chocolate bar. So here it is. I always like to draw it out. Four forty nine. That's four. That's not a seven. And she only brought two dollars and seventy five cents with her. There's Emily, and two dollars and seventy-five cents. How much would she need to borrow to pay for the yummy treat? Well, she doesn't have enough. She needs more money. So how much more? Well, we don't know. So we're gonna have to subtract. So let's subtract four dollars and forty-nine cents. The cost of the candy bar, or the chocolate bar. She only has two seventy-five. If we subtract these two, then we'll figure out how much money she needs to borrow still. My greater number is at the top, my decimals are lined up, and my other place values are lined up as well. Nine pennies, subtract five pennies, is four, okay? Four, subtract seven, I can't, I can't. The, the greater number's at the bottom, I can't take away seven from that. So I have to borrow ten dimes from the loonies. Three loonies, it goes down by one, and you get to borrow 10 dimes. So the 4 turns to 14. 14 subtract 7 is 7. Line up my decimals. 3 subtract 2 is 1. So Emily would actually need to borrow $1.74 to pay for the Emmy treat. And maybe I would lend that money to her only if she promised to maybe give me mm, almost half that chocolate bar. Split that up with me. Make me happy.